The Pac-12 is dead. We just witnessed a conference come to its demise. Over the past couple of weeks, there were a lot of movements. It all started with Colorado, then eventually Arizona, both going to the Big 12. That opened the door for the departures of Washington and Oregon. And I know that this morning was all over the place. There were times where it seemed like the Pac-12 was going to pull out of this thing, that they were going to all agree on their media rights deal. Everything was going to come together after a really drawn out process last night with Washington's Board of Regents. Everything seemed like it was going to be okay. And then before you know it, George Klyovkov found a way to F this whole thing up. The page turned and history was made with Oregon and Washington making that decision to move. And now we're now hearing the next waves of conference realignment. We're hearing that Florida State is seeking outside uh, investment from private equity. That is how they're going to find their way out of the ACC, which is a creative decision and one that could significantly benefit them if they end up making the move to a conference that will position them for long-term success. But we're also now hearing today that Arizona State and Utah are exploring an opportunity with the Big 12. Who is next to follow suit? Oregon State and Washington State should find potential suitors and then do Cal and Stanford make their way over to the Big 10 as well. This is the path, though, for the long-term future of conference realignment. And every time that we have this reshaping, a lot of people get upset. Oh, it's you know, it's not right that we're, we're consolidating conferences. And a lot of people are attached and are hanging on to the history of college football, the history of these conferences, the association that we have with watching these conferences play out in their championship games and in key and important rivalries. I understand the desire to maintain that connection to history, but conferences live and die. In a capitalistic environment, the ones that struggle, the ones that aren't aggressive, are going to die. We, we saw it happen with the Big East. The Big East used to be a competitive, fun conference to watch, and then now it's no more. There is no football version of the Big East, and that did birth the American. But this was all going to happen at some point. And I think the better question of if the ACC can survive this. If Florida State goes, what stops Clemson? What stops Miami to then pursue other opportunities in other conferences? I don't know if these massive 20-team conferences are going to work, but all I do know is that the Pac-12 was not properly positioning their teams to succeed. They weren't setting them up to make enough money to be competitive with the other programs in the Big 12 and the Big 10, and they certainly weren't giving them the proper exposure for them to be a uh, a premier primetime event. They were in a great position to be the end of the night entertainment for college football fans. And they've managed to find a way to bungle it. It became the butt of a joke. And I know that some people don't want to admit that, but the Pac-12 after dark was starting to turn into something that was said in jest. It was never said, oh, I'm excited to watch Pac-12 after dark. No, it was, oh, ha ha, Pac-12 after dark. This, this is ridiculous. You know, what happened during Pac-12 after dark? It was an unexpected thing happened on the field. So always something comical that was happening with it rather than something that was commendable. The question, though, that does come with this now is are teams like USC, UCLA, Washington, and Oregon, are they going to be able to succeed in these parameters with all the travel that is required of them? I think in other sports, it's going to be difficult. They're going to have to figure out how to make it work. But if you're only making so many trips a season, those flights aren't that difficult. A lot of smaller programs, and I played for one in an FCS program, sit through six, seven-hour bus rides. I sat on a 10-hour bus ride all the way to Maine from the University of Rhode Island on a packed bus next to an offensive lineman. Schools have been doing these long trips for since the inception of college football. I think that these teams are going to be fine on their massive chartered planes for six hours when guys take naps and they go over their film, they go over their pregame packets. They're going to be fine. That worry to me makes no sense. The travel is not going to be an issue. Sure, it's hard to translate time zones. Sure, it's hard to be on a plane for six hours, 
but it is something that is part of the machine that is college football. I will say this, though. I really think that Washington and Oregon, and at the very least, Oregon, will do very, very well in the Big Ten. Because right now, let, like, let's be honest with ourselves, the Big Ten is the second best conference, but there's a lot of middling teams. There's a lot of Iowas. There's a lot of Wisconsin's, Minnesota's that are competitive. Purdue is another example. Illinois that are competitive, put out some good years, but for the most part, seven, eight win teams is usually what you're going to get on a good year. I don't think that this conference has had enough top level competition. It is not built like the SEC where on a week to week basis, you are fighting for your life, even if you're playing a mid-tier team, because all the rosters are well-rounded. They're all well-coached. There's just so much talent in the SEC. And I think that the Big Ten is positioning themselves to be competitive in putting out a better week-to-week -week product now that you have Dan Lanning's Oregon team, which is built like an SEC roster, coming in. And you've got Kalen DeBoer's Washington roster that is exciting and can put up a lot of points against teams that are sluggish and slow and defensive-oriented. I think both of these teams are going to be a nice, fresh breath of air for a conference that has a lot of tough, hard-nosed teams, but a lot of average teams. And then now in the mix, obviously, USC is, is going to be a premier team to watch. And let's see how things play out with UCLA. They're consistently inconsistent. But I really do think that Washington Oregon will, will be able to succeed. Let's see if they end up expanding any further. Comment below. Let me know what you think about all this expansion news, about all of this craziness. Drop a comment below and also hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any other com content coming up in this college football season. Make sure you check out Bet Online for all of your sports betting needs. For anything that I do betting related, I go on over to betonline.ag and I use promo code BELIEVE50. Bet Online has all of the latest updated odds for the NFL and college football seasons. Anything you need, whether it's futures, live in game betting, no matter what, your football betting needs are met at Bet Online. And again, make sure you use that promo code BELIEVE50, B L E A V. Five zero to get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.